Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Eduardo. Thank you for clicking on the video. Today I'll be talking about my DACA story, how I became a pilot. Uh, you heard right, an airplane pilot. Anyways, let's get down to the point. Uh, so, as you may know, I am a DACA recipient. Um, some people refer me, or people like us, like myself, they call us dreamers. So, long story short, I was born in Delicias, Chihuahua, Mexico, and when I was a year and seven months old, my parents brought me to the U.S. We immigrated to the U.S. and lived in Mesa, Arizona our whole life, until just recently. So I went to school there, learned English, obviously. Uh, I have three younger sisters, so I'm the oldest. I have to be a role model to them. So when I was able to apply for DACA, I had just recently graduated from high school and that was in May of 2012. So in June of 2012, Barack Obama announced DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. For those of you who do not know what the program is or have never heard of it, I'll leave a link to the description here. That way you can click on it and you can get up to speed. So when I was able to apply, I got approved. Um, I got a document that looks kind of like this. It's a little, you know, plastic card. With this card, I was able to apply for work and get a social security number and a driver's license, which led me to go to college. So long story short from that as well, I, uh, I was always fascinated with airplanes from the beginning of the time since I was a little kid. My parents took me to air shows. I was just so fascinated with the airplanes, how loud, how fast the military airplanes were. Uh, we went to Luke Air Force Base, the air show there. And it was just so fascinating. So I knew I wanted to be an airplane pilot one day, or at least be in an airplane and just have the joy of being in one, right? So when I got my DACA, I knew that it was my chance, my chance to become a pilot. But I did not know, not know what I had to do to get there. So let me explain to you what I did. So when I went to college, I went to Mesa Community College uh, in Mesa, Arizona. I had a lot of awesome friends there. Uh, they each taught me something different, you know, not to take anything for granted, always strive to be a better person academically and morally. So when I graduated on May, 2017th, I uh, was, I at that time, I became the first person in my family to receive and graduate from college, getting my AA degree. And I did it with a nonprofit organization. They are called New Leaf out of Mesa, Arizona. It's a program where you get grant money, you put money into an account, they match you three times with a certain limit. So when I graduated that night, uh, I had a bunch of my family, you know, come to my parents' home and we all celebrated our family milestone. To be honest, it's a family milestone. It's not just my milestone, it's my family's. So that was on May 12th of 2017. It only took me two days later and I decided to move out of Arizona. I've always been intrigued with the idea of living outside of the US, I mean, outside of Arizona. And uh, I just wanted to move somewhere where it was a little bit more different. Um, Arizona, it's too hot. I was used to it. I want to get used to something else, basically. So I moved to Seattle, Washington. So when I moved here to Seattle, I did not know a single person, except for the person who had interviewed me for a position working at the airport. So working at the airport here in Seattle, when I first got my job, I was living in a uh, Motel 8. I lived there for about seven days um, when I first moved to Seattle. Like I mentioned, I did not know a single person, didn't have a car, nothing. So I rented a car for seven days and I booked a room with the Motel 8 for seven days. Throughout those seven days, what I ended up doing, I went on Craigslist, on any website I could basically go and browse on 
And I ended up finding a really, really nice lady who helped me through the process. Her name is Charlotte. Charlotte, you're watching this video. Thank you very much. And she was able to accommodate me with uh, letting me rent a room out of her house up in the Beacon Hill area. I was only paying $300 a month. Uh, I was living in a small little room. Enough for me, right? And my work, uh, where I was working at the time, was probably a mile and a half away. Convenient, very convenient. So when I started working at the airport, um, I soon got a car. I paid full cash for it because back home in Arizona, I was able to save up enough money and uh, I knew I needed a car eventually. So as soon as I got my job, I got a car and uh, ended up going around, got that place where I started living at. And after living there for about a year and almost two years, honestly, a year and like eight, nine months or something like that, I ended up moving out, um, moved into a bigger place with some other roommates who I've never met in before. They were also very nice. I rented a room there. And that's when I really started thinking about my future. You know, DACA allowing me to work was just not enough. I wanted to do more, be a productive member to society. If I could help more in a different way and also help my community at the same time with the passion that I had. So I wanted to be a pilot and I want to be a pilot. And that's the same thing that kept me driving. So when I moved in with, those, uh, with my roommates at that house, I ended up going to the local college. I ended up getting um, what's called Washington State Financial Aid. I was able to apply and I was able to get some grant money. And again, this grant money allowed me to go to college basically for free. But that was only because I was able to apply and I got it because I met the criteria. So when I got Washington State Financial Aid, part of the uh, main reason behind it was it was eligible to DACA students like myself. For those of you who are thinking about going to college, Washington State Financial Aid here, you can apply, you can get the money, you can basically go to college for almost for free. Um, all you just have to do is live here for a year and you're good. So when I went to college here, I knew I wanted to be a pilot still, but eventually after looking at online jobs for pilots, what I needed, I knew I needed a first class medical. So before doing anything, approaching anything else, uh, I went to go get a medical exam. So they check you, check anything basically, definitely your eyesight, you know, if you're colorblind, if you can see 2020 vision, hearing impairments, you know, blood, uh, diabetes, anything you can think of, they check. Successful, I, I was successful, I got my uh, first class medical. Soon after that, after enrolling myself into college, I went to Green River College. I started taking a minimum of 15 credits the first two semesters. Soon after that, I thought it was best that I add a little bit more credits. Uh, that way I can get done quicker and sooner. Soon after that, I was able to um, start flight training as well. So not to get fast tracked here for a sec, what I ended up doing was I went to Green River College uh, from August 2018 to December 2019, and I graduated with my four-year degree. I'm the first person in my family to receive a four-year degree, and I was able to do it on my own without any help from my parents financially. Um, like I said, I moved here by myself, so I don't have anybody's help besides just myself. So I was able to get this. So that's my uh, four-year degree there. And while I was going to school uh, just last year, a couple months ago, I was also going to a flight club called Spana Flight out of uh, Puyallup in Washington. I was able to meet with a couple people there. I met uh, an instructor who wanted to help me get my pilot's license. And after working at the airport, I was able to save up enough money a whole year and I finally got my pilot's license. So that's what a pilot license looks like. 
and I have it blocked off on the information there. I just don't want someone to, you know, just to take my information basically. Anyways, um, so in June of 2019, I graduated. I mean, I, uh, well, yeah, technically graduated and got my uh, pilot's license. So I was able to do that on my own, did not take a single dime out of my parents besides only the initial $500 to start the process. After that, I paid every single flight club, I mean, flight hour on my own. And right after that, I uh, saved up enough money and paid for it. For those of you who do not know what it cost, this here alone cost me 14500 Typically, you could get it a lot cheaper. I mean, you could get flight hours cut here and there. If you're persistent, you study and uh, you remain focused and you keep accelerating in your training. Fortunately, I had uh, a full-time job. I had full-time college and I was doing flight school at the same time. So I was always so busy. So I wasn't always on track with my flight training as much as I should have. But eventually it led me to getting my uh, pilot's license. So since I was young, I've always wanted to be a pilot and now I have. I just want to show a, share a picture with you guys. This is a picture of me the n same day I uh, graduated and got my uh, pilot's license. And aviation, they call it your check ride. So I passed my check ride and I was able to do that on my own. And again, I'm the first person in my family to be an aviator. Uh, no one in my family has ever been or interested in aviation at all. So that to me is a milestone. Having DACA, it allowed me to get my TSA approval to get my flight training done. I paid for my flight training on my own. And uh, just last year, I also graduated with my four year degree. So, for those of you guys who are in the DACA program as well, please just do whatever you can to keep chasing after your dreams. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do anything. Just like I said, I'm the first person in my family to do all of this amazing things before I was told that, you know, I probably wouldn't make it this far and I have. So, just keep chasing after your dreams. One last thing I want to leave you guys off with was, this is not the end for me. Uh, I know we have a decision coming up with the Supreme Court here coming up in the summer. And uh, I just want to let you guys to keep an open mind, be optimistic. I know most of the Supreme Court justices are leaning towards the um, conservative side, more towards the uh, person who's in the White House, um, but there could always be a different outcome. So just stay open to different options. Hopefully this comes out in a good way for us DACAs. Like I mentioned, I I feel like I've proved to myself so far that I'm a good member to society and I'm committed to, you know, be a leader in the future. So. What I want to do in the future is I want to get my master's degree in aviation um, eventually. And I also want to complete my, what's called my instrument rating and my commercial rating as well. That will allow me to get a job flying commercially and flying passengers basically anywhere in the US because you know I can't leave the US. So I already have two flying jobs lined up and I just need to get the flight hours at this point. So if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below. And feel free to share this video to all your DACA friends. For those of you who are DACA pilots, um, we are a rare breed. Not many of us are around here. <laughs> I don't think I've met any other DACAs that are dreamers who are also wanting to become pilots. Uh, besides just one person who was a helicopter pilot. So, very cool, right? Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my video. Give it a thumbs up. Comment down below. 
And if you guys want me to make more videos in an in-depth how I went to college or how I got my uh, pilot's license, how I was able to apply, apply for DACA myself, just let me know, shoot me a message, and I'll get right to you. Thank you once again. Have a good day. Bye.